Hey guys, I'm um, sorry for the attire. I'm still kind of semi laid up. Um, I'll tell you about that, share that with you in a minute. Actually, I was in the hospital for two weeks in three emergency rooms, but did have to have an operation. But anyhow, long story. Um, but I want to get to the message of the deceived part, guys. It's in 2 Timothy 2, you know, um, lovers of pleasure, just all this stuff that's in there. I think it's three and four. Um, in the last days, perilous times. But this one is out of Galatians 4, 5, and 6. You're not going to be deceived or mocked. Guys, God is not. In Ephesians 4, I think it's 5 and 6. The tree of knowledge. And then there's a scripture that said, My people, pay, they perish for the lack of knowledge. Um, there's a couple of videos I want you to watch that I put out. One was the Spirit of Deceptions from three years ago. The other one is there's a famine in the land for the lack of knowledge, for the lack of reading of the word, for the lack of the word. I'm sorry. That's Amos 8.11. And it was about a storm that was going to come to America from 8.11 to 9.11. Guys, we already passed that. I see that. And I was like, man, God, did I miss it? But no, I didn't. Look at that one up, too. Guys, there's some stuff out there on the internet right now. It's like, I'm trying really hard not to repost stuff and do all that stuff. It's just kind of gotten, you know, like road rage and craziness. And I'm trying not to be deceived either. But it's like, man, can you not sense and feel that something's coming down? Because the outpouring is coming, guys. God's not going to be mocked. He's not going to be deceived. It's not business as usual. There's, I mean, I'm not going to change where, my, where I'm at. There's a reason why, God. I call them landmarks. It's things that God's done so that, that have been so constant in my life that I know what I'm talking about. It's like this hospital stay, guys, okay? I'm diabetic. I've been that way since 94. Don't like any of it. Well, long, long story to get here, but I was paying attention to my feet, probably not as much as I should have, but my foot started hurting. And my wife had been in the hospital, not blaming her. It's not her fault. I won the hospital stay. We just had a lot of distractions. My car got totaled a month ago, November 3rd. I'm just now getting that straightened out. There was all these different distractions. And so I wasn't really... No, I noticed my foot was hurting, but it wasn't discolored or anything. But then one day, just like right before Thanksgiving, it just blew up. And it was really, really red. And when I, the pain, I can't feel my feet that good, guys, honestly, from the neuropathy. So when I looked down, and it hurt. When it gets to that threshold of hurt, it really hurts. I can't feel most of it. I get poked. I've had stuff in my shoes for days, didn't even know it. One time it was a piece of a garden hose. Okay, guys, I just didn't even know. I don't even know how my shoe, my shoe fit on my foot. I tore it up. Okay? I'm saying this for a reason. Okay, so I went to the, my wife's like, go to the emergency room. Well, it was the day before Thanksgiving. I didn't want to ruin everybody's Thanksgiving. I went that Friday after Thanksgiving. My whole leg, guys, looked like a red-hot chili pepper. My leg, guys, all the way up. Bad. Really bad. The infection had gotten really bad. First response, pretty much, from the doctors was, I told my wife, I said, I'll be fine as long as they don't show up with a chainsaw and a hacksaw and a bolt cutters. Well, he did. The, the, the doctor was supposed to do the operation. And the first day I was in there, they were, when they told me they couldn't eat and I had to be, you know, because they were going to do a, you know, a procedure was what they called it. Well, guys, I told them no. I said, get the infection first. I prayed about it. That's what the Lord told me to do. I said, how can you tell what, you know, the first doctor was, was going to do the operation. was like, you're going to lose your toe. Came in, blew in there like a storm. You're going to lose your toe, probably maybe even part of your foot. Wasn't even in there, not even a minute, guys, honestly, literally. Some of the other doctors were great. He was just kind of like, man, I just felt the spirit of just, it just wasn't right. 
So I said, no, get the infection first. You didn't look at the x-rays. Do you even have it? Yes, I brought them from the other hospital, the other emergency room I was just at. They gave me the disc, the discharge papers, everything. Oh, okay. Well, so he ordered an x-ray. I said, well, they just did an MRI yesterday. That's what he showed up the next day. Oh, I don't like MRIs. Okay. He didn't look at the x-ray. Didn't look at the MRI. Yeah, he probably knew what he was doing, I'm sure. He was a doc. You know, I, I mean, I'm not knocking that he didn't know that. But it's like, I'm not getting my foot cut off just because you say so. No. I still had the operation, guys. I told, made him for a week. I went through 60 IVs, guys, literally. At maybe 80, fucking four to eight a day. Big old bottles of stuff, you know, antibiotics. Pumped in me as fast as they could. While the infection went started going down and down and down. By the time I got to the second hospital, three emergency rooms in the second hospital, and they did do the operation, they got about this much, my, just, just, I think right above the nail, the very tip of my toe. And the last thing they did was, after they cut that off, they cut a little snid bit off of the bone. I'm not trying to be cruel, crude, but, and then they, you know, have to do this lab work and stuff, and they, so positive results came back 100%. The surgery was 100% effective. All that. Why well, I'm saying that, guys, is the enemy wants to distract us with, yes, there was plenty of lies, fraud, all kinds of stuff in the election. Coronavirus. What do you think ushered all this in? Guys, you don't believe me? You think I'm not a conspiracy theorist, guys. You live in California. Go, go out tonight at 12 o'clock at night. And see where you land in jail. Go to go to Seven Eleven. You can't do it, some of that stuff in Michigan. You can't. You can't go out and dine. You can't. You, you got to wear a mask everywhere you go. Guys, I have ninety nine percent of the time I keep one in my pocket. Now that's about it. But I, you know, we'll go to a restaurant. People look at me funny. You don't even want to cough. I wear a mask. I didn't wear a mask the whole time in the hospitals, except maybe one percent when somebody gets on the coronavirus police bus. I saw doctors, nurses, a lot of them, guys. I was in there. I lived in there for, that's what I'm saying. There's a landmark. I was there at Ground Zero, and I live in a major city, over a million people, and then another million in the suburbs. It's a big place. Yes, the coronavirus is serious. The hospitals are full. They're busting at the seams, sick people. But I saw a lot of questions. They're not dying. Some are, and I'm not knocking and mocking that either because that's not good. But I'm saying the hospitals are full of people that are dying in diseases. It was weaponized to control because it's a sin. It's the love of money, the lust of the flesh. They're trying to usher in a new world order, guys. You don't believe me? you got to have a, you know... You can vote without an ID, but you can't go by without something without a mask on. Soon they're going to talk about having to have a Corona stamp on your passport or, you know, with you or whatever. Tracking you with your phone, all kinds of crazy stuff that just, man, it just blew up. I don't have it in front of me. I've been using my computer, but it's in the book, guys. It's called the Bible. Don't be deceived. God's not going to be mocked in this. I'm not talking about who won the election and who didn't. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about he's going to expose all the corruptness just so we can gloat. We have to be very careful, guys, as Christians and as ministers to not, how are we going to be the light of the world if we act just like the world? Barking on the internet. Like I said, it's become road rage. Click, boom, boom, you know, run, dump and run. Dump on people and run. Go hide and get your cup of coffee and go off and, you, you know, your exercise or whatever, you know, whatever your life is. Just, you know, you spend five minutes on it and you blast something out and then you run. I'm not running for one. It's not me. I'm running, all right. I'm running this race and I'm running to the cross. I'm running to Jesus. But what I'm telling you is, 
You want direction? You want guidance? 5 a.m., meet me there for prayer. You're not going to get it without reading your Bible, without praying, without seeking him. Oh, yeah, all this stuff is about to blow up, and it's not just the election. It's about to blow up. We, I put this out. A lot of people didn't like it. Some really good, strong Christians. One virus took out the church. Kind of like, Daniel, Esther, where are you? God, looking for his remnant to stand in the gap. Not to be on the internet with all the political parties. Man, guys, this is an old saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, maybe we should. Because it seems pretty, pretty, pretty blatant that it's corrupt. Messed up, jacked up. A lot going on. Do we really even need to know all that for the exposure? No, we need to set people. Jesus, this is a perfect example, okay, guys, of why he wants to, the truth to come out. Not just on the election, but what they're directing us to. Because it's not, I'm not a conspiracy theory, guys. That's one of my messages that are out there. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on, not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He'll direct your paths. Proverbs, what, 4, 5, and 6. Our understanding, and we can't even figure out who shot JFK. Ask somebody. We get a half a dozen different theories. I get it. You know, the internet's full of it. People are saying we didn't even land on the moon, or did we? You know, the flag's blowing in the wind, or is it not? Man, your mind will get messed up with that stuff, guys. That's the de enemy trying to deceive us. Get your mind off of the reality of, of God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Sorry. No more games, guys. I'm no more Captain Crunch Christianity. This is the real deal, guys. He's not going to be mocked. His word's not going to go out void. It'll accomplish that what it just sent. If he's telling you things and he's showing you things and you got it in deep in your prayer life and in your in your walk with him, like I said, landmarks, you don't have to stumble and fumble and bumble around. Stand on the truth. But all this other stuff, guys, we got to kind of slow it down a little bit and really know that it's God. Really pray about it. Because we can be just as inflammatory and guilty as everyone else. Me included. This is not, hey, you need to do this and I need to do something different. There's, you know, I'm kind of used to all this. Honestly, I'm used to all this... Uh, Deceptive, corruptive stuff, because I've seen a lot of it in the church, guys. Been there, too. It's all coming out, but this is the exposure piece, guys, okay? Good, perfect example. A woman caught adultery. Man, the world was going to beat her to death. That's what Moses said. Kill him. Destroy her. She deserves it. Well, maybe she did. I don't know who she slept with. Maybe the mayor's son. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Sin is sin. Whether it's adultery, murder, lying, cheating, whatever. Sin is still sin. We've all got some issues that we've got to resolve at the cross. But the exposure piece? What did Jesus do? He ignored him. Who has the first stone? Who, do, who's, who has no sin? Throw the first stone. He tucked their tail and ran. Looked up. He said, woman, where is everybody? Where are your accusers? I don't accuse you, but what do you tell her? Go and sin no more. The exposure is to set people free, guys. we got to get to the root cause of this. All the lies, the deception, the coronavirus mess. Man, it was weaponized to destroy people. To deceive people. 
Where's that coming from? The devil himself. Where's all this one world government coming from people loving money more than God? Themselves. If all lives really mattered, then why is abortion so rampant, guys? Lives don't matter. Why can they just lock you up, throw you in jail if you don't comply? Close your business. People are getting evicted. People are losing their lives, committing suicide. I'm going to say this. I'm not going to say his name. Went to a big home improvement store where I used to work. 2000, 1990, late 90s, 2000. Saw a friend of mine. I'm not going to say his name. Say We'll say you will use Bob. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Not good. Well, I worked with them. You know, there were some things that weren't great. Is it here or home? It's home. Told me a story. He worked retail and he didn't want to infect anybody in his family. So he hadn't talked to his brother for a month. His brother died of a heart attack and they found him a month later. It's like, man, I could have got ran over by a bus. So I'm so sick of this fear of this coronavirus. Man, he's not the only one guys that have been hurt by it. I know people that <clears throat> their loved ones have died in August and they're just not having the memorial for it because of all this mess. People are hospitalized, dying, nursing homes. <clears throat> and they're saying, oh, all lives matter, blah, blah, blah. No, just your life, a few closing businesses, you're shutting down the country, you're locking it up so you can gather more money. Look at the I minutes mean, out there, guys. Don't be deceived. Most likely true. I saw one post. All these big companies, they're 100% profits. Some of the biggest chains out there. And I quit shopping one of them, the largest retailer in the world. I don't shop because of the spirit that I feel in there. I'm walking down the hallway, their, their profits have skyrocketed. Yet the small businesses and it's the guys that are just, you know, common common people that are just working and trying to make a living, shut them down, lock them up. But yet you can double your profits. I was walking down the aisle and I told my wife, I said, I hate this place. More than once. Because the people were just downright ornery. You could tell they were pressured. I could feel the pressure coming from the corporate structure of it. Quit shopping there. I'm not going to put my money any place like that anymore. I found other avenues, to places to go. Used to buy my dog treats. I don't anymore because they weren't good for her. But they were four ninety eight. Right after the coronavirus, a couple months later, I just checked to see how much they were. Eleven ninety eight. While the virus was going on, my grandkids drink a lot of milk. Dollar ninety-eight or something for a gallon. It was pretty cheap, just for a regular two percent milk. It's three ninety-eight. Within weeks after the coronavirus mess started. How? Why? Greed, guys. The love of money. The politicians. It's what it's all about, guys. It's all about the corruptness. It's all about the ties with China. It's all about the, you know, the money aspect of it, the money and the power. Don't be deceived, guys. God's not going to be mocked. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, if we don't pray this through, we could be the Babylon, Babylonian Empire. I live here too, guys. This is my land. This is my country. Where I call home. No more. You want to change something? Get off your theology and try a little neology. It's going to take some old fashioned Holy Ghost, backbone filled, preaching, teaching, saints of God. I was under, imagine that, six years, an all black church. North Dallas. I was glad to be saved, guys. One day I'm listening to The Who and my favorite band and Led Zeppelin and Leonard Skinner. And the next day, 
in a five-hour service with black gospel music being three hours of it. Big change. Black preacher used to say, some of you got a $600 briefcase and a $1 message. You need to go get a behind a building, a barn, cry out to God, pull some snot, blood coming out, get a halt of God. It's time to get a halt of the author and finisher of our faith. You want to change this thing? You want the exposure? It needs to be the right exposure, guys, to set people free. Not to shame them and guilt them, condemn them. But it's sin from within. <clears throat> it's just being exposed in different avenues and everybody wants to bark about a certain one. because That's what the devil wants us to just devour each other. Man, guys, my grandkids do it. Anybody that's parents knows this, okay? We probably did it as kids, too. You try to divide and conquer your parents. You try to work them again. When my grandkids pull that, I'm my granddaughter, my daughter-in-law, or my son, and I put a stop to it real quick. That's what the enemy's doing, guys. He wants to deceive us with this election, with this coronavirus, with this problem and that problem and this issue and that issue. And yes, they're real and they're in our face. Like I said, just walk out the door. And especially if you're like in California or some of these locked on already places. You don't believe me? Go walk out. Go, 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 go to a store without a mask on. I do all the time. It's just me, cause I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm not barking. I'm. I'm gonna be about action. I don't wear a mask. I haven't. People sometimes people ask me. One time I had a shirt on. All said with Jesus. This guy said, "Where's your mask?" And I looked down. And I said, "Oh, it's called the blood of the Lamb." Got one on. Name is Jesus. I'm not trying to be stupid and crazy and goofy. It's just time, guys. Quit being deceived. God's not going to be mocked. But we don't have to be the barking dog. Be more like that Rottweiler. And we're going to see or hear you really till it's a little too late. Don't be like that Chihuahua. It ain't going to do squat. And if you drop, kick, and boot it, it flies across the room. Not time to be that barking dog, guys. Time to be Joel's army. So what's he telling you to do? He doesn't want your wealth and fame. He wants your guilt and shame. Because he wants to set you free. He doesn't want your ability, but your availability. To talk to you in the cool of the day, early in the morning, 5 a.m. The reason why he's been really, really, really having me zero in on 5 a.m. Why? Because you can turn off this. Hello. You can turn off this computer. Hello. You can turn off the news. Hello. There's an off and on button. You can turn it all off. Only thing I'm going to turn on is my coffee pot because I love coffee. But that's just me. That one's free. No distractions. My wife gets up early now, too, but we, you know, we pray together. But we also have separate places where we love to pray. Her, she loves to pray outside, enjoy the sun coming up and just the beauty of it. And that's just, she just loves that. Me, I've got, you know, a recliner that I love to pray in, in our living room. It's my spot. Sometimes we share, sometimes we don't. Sometimes, you know, it's cold out, whatever. But sometimes we're not all always up together. But I get up as often as I can at five in the morning and I realize sometimes you may not be able to it. We're not gonna win this battle, guys, without his plan, his will, his purpose. We're gonna lose and lose big if we're not in tune to what God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word are telling us. Tune out all this deceptive, deceiving spirits, lies. 
That's the other one I've got out there. That spirit of deception. Well, I already said that. The spirit of deception. Man, guys. There's if some if even half or a third of what I'm seeing, some of the stuff on the internet, we've got some stuff coming down the pike in the natural and in the supernatural in a very, very big way. But we can't be that prophet that's trying to point a finger and say on May 19th at two at two eleven. China's going to drop a bomb on your head. <laughs> really? Okay. This gloating business has got to stop. Because he wants the glory. It's not even, we don't even know how he's going to do it, guys. I'm not saying that some of y'all may not have some, some former fashion or parts of it. He may not even want you to tell. He might. He wants the glory, guys. Not some somebody that's claiming to be a prophet that may or may not be. Sorry. We're all prophetic as God's children, guys. We've all got gifts, talents, amazing things that He's that He's given us. Man, I I'm gonna end with this. Church, two, three thousand people. I heard a better message from some guy that I was talking to in the sanctuary before church, some homeless guy, than I heard come from the pulpit. It's really sad. Broke my heart. Um, I wept and wailed and cried about that one for a long time. I'm not saying who, where, any of that, because I'm not. I don't. I'm not a big fan of that kind of between them and God. One day I may say something to him, one day I may not, I don't know yet. It's a whole nother. We can't be deceived, guys. This is this is the real deal. It's game time, guys. The show is on. We must be about our father's business. Love you guys. Don't be so easily deceived. We can pick one. CNN seems to be the biggest barker of it, but they all are, you know. <clears throat> lies, portrayal of lies. Guys, pick one. We can get pretty twisted up into that mess real quick. I'm not saying we shouldn't say anything about it. I'm saying pray about it. What's God telling us to say? I'm not saying we shouldn't be the ones exposing it. Maybe you are the one that has to expose it. But it really needs to be birthed in prayer. So we're not deceived. I'm going to end with this. I'm going to tell off of myself, okay? I worked construction most of my younger years. Built houses, bridges, roadways. You know, I was a form carpenter. I was a welder. Did all kinds of, you know, some of it was pretty hard stuff, guys. I was a framer, framed houses. So I'm, I'm, I'm in an auto office job at the time. Managing some construction, but... And my wife calls me and says, hey, I need the, the, you know, the garbage disposal went out. Okay, so I do the, back then it was pay less. You know, some of the other ones weren't around. That's how long ago it was. So I do the, you know, the husband thing. I stop, get a garbage disposal, bring it home, look at it, you know. Uh, oh, man, I used to be able to frame houses and build, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. But I'm not a plumber, but, you know. Sure, I can figure, you know, dive into it, okay? Figured out how to take, you know, all the stuff to plumber is probably easy. To me, it's a little bit more complicated, but I finally figured it out. And took the coverage spools out, put the new one in, and plugged it in, everything worked. Next day, I get a call from my wife. I told her the story. So, she says, honey, she says, what'd you do? Like, what do you mean? Well, garbage disposal works, but the dishwasher doesn't. It, it won't drain. It's running all over the place. Okay, well, I'll look at when I come home. Did you read the instructions? I lied, guys. Pride. Oh, yeah, I read them. Well, all the way home, I'm flying home. I threw them away. My like, man, I hope the trash guy didn't come yet to get them. Dig them out of the trash. Uh, my wife comes out, what are you doing? And, oh, nothing, honey. Lied again. 
Find the instructions. Step number four, seven, four, seven, whatever. If you're, um, if you have a garbage disposal drain line hooked up to it, where you have to remove this plug. <laughs> There's a plug in the side of the garbage disposal, just a little plastic plug. All you have to do is take it out so that it could drain into the garbage disposal. Well, I didn't read the instructions and I lied. It was 25 years ago, guys, a long time ago. I went and tell my wife for about a year, honestly. Embarrassed, covered it up. That's what I'm saying, guys. We have an instruction book. It's called the Bible. We have a, we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus. We can win this, but not being deceived. Read the instruction manual. It's called the Bible. Pray about what you're saying. Get direction from him. He's God that created the heaven and earth. You don't think he's well able to tell you things? What to do, when to do it, how to do it, to guide your life? Come on, guys. Not time to be deceived. Prideful, lying, whatever. You know, we've all been there. Some of us are still there. Bring it to the cross. Cover it under the blood of the Lamb. Ask God for forgiveness right now. Repent. Don't have to expose yourself in a public gathering. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe if you don't, won't. God might. What he wants from you is a little neology and not all your theology. He wants to talk to his children. He wants you to come home. The cool of the day. So you're not deceived, so we're not deceived, so we're not scattered, so we're not double-minded. Love you guys. So does God, so does Jesus, so does the Holy Ghost. His plan's awesome, guys. Let's do this. Like Larry the Cable Guy, let's get her done. Come on, guys. We're more than conquerors. Love you guys.